Okay, it's 6.30. Welcome, Nottingham, to another uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order. We're starting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay, before I get started, I'd like to recognize uh, Officer Alvarez. Is, did I say that right, Chief? Chief, did I say his last name right, Officer Alvarez? Alvarez. Alvarez, yes. He was recognized by the New Hampshire uh, State Police DARE DARE Officer Program for uh, uh, being an outstanding student and helping uh, another student pass the course. So kudos to him uh, as far as uh, willing to help out another uh, classmate. Okay. Does anybody have an opportunity to look at the uh, manifest and payroll? Can I ask one thing about that? We had a six hundred and something dollar bill to the union leader. Is that for us advertising about jobs we have in town, or that's uh, most likely planning and zoning work? That's okay. our newspaper record. Oh, it's not. I thought it was always Fosters or. No, we switched a few years ago. The rates okay. flipped, and uh, yeah, that's what we typically are paying. Okay. Any other questions or comments about manifest or payroll? Okay, can we have a motion? Make a motion to approve the accounts payable manifest of November 29th, 2021 and the payroll manifest of November 30th, 2021. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, we don't have any minutes. Uh, okay. We met last week. So that was an extra minute. Right. Is the first and fifteenth good to go? Has everybody reviewed those or? I'm up to date on all of them. I've read them all, so good enough. What, what are you missing, Lorraine? Fifteenth of month? The first and the fifteenth. Oh, we did one last week, and then we we left one. The table one. Table one. Actually, we didn't have enough members <laughs> that were present at the meeting. That's right. So that's one I was out. I think so. Yeah. And you knew both, yeah. Yeah. The fifteenth. No, I thought you voted to approve even though you weren't here because we discussed the fact that you didn't necessarily have to be here. You didn't have to abstain. I think I, st I, think I still did abstain. Did. Yeah. Is everybody okay if we go forward with the 1st and the 15th? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes of the meetings from November 1st and November 15th. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Budget? Thursday. Planning? Wednesday. CIP. We met last Tuesday. We went over the um, the wish list of items that uh, from the department heads. Uh, Chris went over the went over those for the, for the board, and then um, we also saw the we went over the school items uh, that they intend to put on their CIP plan this year. They're sort of re redoing it to um, sort of from scratch to uh, incorporate the uh, the school edition and you know it's gonna take a different form but they're gonna work that in again so it's still all gonna be one CIP though right yeah that I I'm honestly unclear about that do you recall Chris were they intending to do it with us or we're gonna in one CIP sheet, or were we going to do separate spreadsheets like yeah, we did it's, last it's year? Only of any value if it's done together. So Correct. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, no point in doing them separately. Right. Imagine. That's uh, yeah. yeah. Whether you know, they're they're so close to their deadlines and still making decisions. I don't know what product we're going to get at the end. 
Are they sub um, are using they using the sheets and submitting the sheets the way yeah. they have in the past? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah okay. these these worksheets. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just when they don't know what they're going to propose. Yeah. Uh, some of their some of their possibilities are spillover effects. If you you know if you do the uh, right addition, right right you know, right. It spills over to the rest of the CIP. Yeah. Yeah. So, like Chris is explaining, like it, like if the school edition passed a vote, or if if it didn't pass a vote, then then there are some individual items that still need to be accommodated. So, and I believe we are meeting next uh, December sixth. Three hundred. Marston? Uh, yeah, I just get a great update from Matt Kikuchis, um, who continues to do an outstanding job of uh, overseeing all the construction. Um, we have backstops on order. Um, we will minimally get concrete posts set this year for those, uh, but that is going to be just backstops. It's not going to be side fencing because uh, we don't have enough money for that right now. Uh, with regards to the utility shed, thanks to Sean and your team for helping to prep the site. Uh, they're waiting for the concrete pad to get poured. Uh, the shed's a prefab building, so it's on order, and hopefully we'll get that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, waiting for electricity, waiting for the shed to get in place so that they can do the um, underground vault for the utilities. And uh, thank you to Shea Concrete for discounting the vault 50% for us, yeah, Shea. Uh, the pump for the water systems back ordered. Thank you, COVID. Uh, but we are hoping that we should have that by early spring and be able to have that in place. Uh, Gary Anderson is trying to squeeze irrigation in this month. Thank you, Gary. Um, we, what's helping us is that the ground isn't frozen yet, uh, and hopefully he um, is looking at next weekend. And then I think as uh, <laughs> Uh, Courtney mentioned last week the Trails Committee has uh, posted the blazes on the trails for the first walking path. So things are moving along as well as they can given you know the situation with back orders and COVID delays and personnel and in town who are judging the schedule. So it's looking good. Okay. Uh, Administrator's report. Uh, tax bills are out. Uh, I imagine you all got them Saturday at the day. I don't uh, go to the post office this time of year. <laughs> just don't want to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got mine Saturday. The, uh, you got through the rate setting last week. Yep. Uh, any questions or anything about that, how that shuffled out in the end? Uh, um, the uh, RFPs for the kitchen renovation in this building are due tomorrow. Uh, we're expecting at least a couple. I know we've had some old town hall renovation on our It's available on the website. That's a bigger job. Um, tight timeline on the uh, proposal turnaround.
Get your sweater. Get your sweater. It starts at 9. Uh, I think you will have to it started up. at 10. Oh, I on sale, it's been 10 for the past 14 years. Well, uh, that's what I thought. Whatever we decide, whatever time we decide, is get here at least a half an hour before it's possible. Yeah. Spitting distance of where you want to start. Yvonne's first parade, leading the parade. <laughs> So it'll be a slow walk. <laughs> Action items from last meeting at 22 budget. Uh, looks like we don't have anything for assessing. General business. I'm back sorry. To, back to action items. I think there's things we might have kind of like lost track of. For example, also had a, I mean, within the context of the budgeting process, we had a request from the PLIA to handle the funding a little bit differently this year. Um, and I don't know if you're factoring that into budget press, but that's something we need to uh, respond to them on. Um, and then last week, we had the discussion about tax rate setting, and we talked about the fact that we want to consider, you know, bringing down debt or looking at, you know, uh, big dollar ticket items that we might, in fact, use the general fund for that would have a longer term impact, and uh, we need to have that discussion somewhere along the line. So those need to be captured as action items. Assessing general business. Twenty two twenty two budget to serve a couple of department heads last week and we have a couple more here today. Do you have uh gave you card copies, nothing's changed since the first set. This is just numbers that had changed? Yeah, yes, we did. I thought we had captured those. Yeah, uh, they just, and I, I mean, not that I'm looking for it now, but it had impact on the bottom. Totally. Anything else or you want to jump in with Sean? Jump in with Sean, I guess. Like to start this, just you want to go line. I bring it up, go line by line, whatever you feel more comfortable doing. Okay, um, first, right, uh, the uh, salary line 90% um, increase. Uh, we've added another full time employee, uh, and that employee we look to split that with uh, Courtney in the parks and recs and at the uh, recycling center along with the highway department. So, Sean, to refresh my memory, did um, part of the salary in her budget? No, I, we put it in all into this budget as yeah. a placeholder to get started. Yeah. And when you've got recycling, parks, and rec, it's all that. It's that's one person for all of them. Yes. Okay. 
uh, door timeline has stayed the same. Maintenance stayed the same. Supplies have stayed the same. Um, the next thing that has gone up is the um, sand, is, I mean the gravel and the stone. Um, we used more gravel this year. Um, and, uh, what, this number that shows the increase from what we spent also had the winter use of stone in it. And when we jumped down to salt, I plugged it in there. Um, but uh, that's it. Uh, salt is a 26. Just a question on that. Um, knowing salt and so that's showing an increase this year, but knowing how you're uh, doing this job, like putting all of the road, getting all of the roads into the mm -hmm. maintenance, not next year, but over time, are we going to see kind of like maybe that decrease? Yes, you will be. So what we have been doing, and I'm, I apologize for not giving any more detail, but we have been, we put quite a bit of gravel down this year on the dirt roads. Yeah. And I, I think that you can see that they, they've held up a lot better. Um, the next thing is the new roads that we've taken over, we're, we're putting the gravel to that so that they're holding up better, the water is shedding better. Um, before they were accepted as town roads and they were emergency land, private roads, which is the bare minimum that we've done. Um, over time, with the lack of gravels that were applied, and with erosion and dust problems and stuff like that, the amount of gravel has gone down the roads. So the roads need to be built up. They need to be crowned, sloped, shaped, whatever it takes to keep the uh, water to drain to the uh, the ditch lines that need to be uh, created to. But at some point, you're going to reach that point where you right. We we'll reach that point, and then they'll, they'll diminish. If we pave some more dirt roads, it also would diminish. Um, the s highway salt account uh, that we saw a 26 percent increase that's effective immediately on salt this year I also incorporated in the line to show the cost of the stone that we use as uh, for winter winter maintenance on treating our gravel roads used it for the last two years and it shows to work it not only does it give added traction and sticks out further over you know, dusting of snow and it, it's something to grab on when there's ice, but it also helps in the springtime with the mud, and putting rock back into the road. That's all we do. Yes. Uniform budget went up a little higher this year. This because we had a late start on that transition where we went from a laundering service to doing a um, allowance for for employees. You will see that line will will even write out this year and be right on the money because it will start effective on January first. Engineering sees a significant increase. That's to do with some of the surprises that we got on our new roads that we needed some engineering where they were in um, environmental sensitive areas. So that's why that number went up by $20,000. Do you think that's an accurate number? That's a number I put in there based on what we got, we're seeing on Highland Ave. So I only can use what we're doing over there for the number now. So yes, I would say that. Chris, aren't we using the uh, stipend money for some of these engineering costs? We, we can. Uh, the ARPA money to yeah. the yeah. Uh Yeah, you haven't, you haven't voted to do that, but that is an option. So we can, we can but we did, we did approve for Highland, right? For Highland, we, I don't think we said it.
we'll probably come back in December and say we want to authorize haven't already I don't recall that we did but I, I think that's kind of consistent with you know this is the first draft Any other questions on engineering? Oh. Can I go back to just, just ask you some general questions as we're just going over them? As I'm reading through, you're going a little faster than me that I'm, as I'm trying to process this. Uh, we have the highway fuel. Um, we budgeted 60000 last year. We spent 30000 We're proposing 60000 again. Then you actually look at you know what we actually spent in 2020 and what we actually spent in 2019. Mm -hmm. How can we spend fifteen thousand dollars less one year? Is that because the dropped that much? We, we're doing a different approach right now. Um, first of all, that number two will reflect the fuel. We haven't been using the fuel pump since April at the garage. We had a six thousand dollar cost on an additive that we were treating the diesel fuel an annual cost. Yep. So that cost, that number is reflected in that. And um, I asked, I talked to the accountant about it. Uh, she says it's right on for what my department is at, and that we might be doing a little bit better at the pump right now. I think it was the main bit October. I'm just looking at different ways where if yeah, we can no, cut five grand right. off this number here, we can cut five grand off some other yeah. number. Yeah. yeah, we don't. Know I just didn't know if that number had to be that high. If we could get away with, yeah. you know, looking at the past numbers, if we could get away with the 55 number or, or a little less. Yeah, that's fair. What, what, I will, what we'll do late in the game, the way we used to do business was we would track almost manually track fuel use by department. You'll see fuel, you know. Need more. The last one. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so those are all things that could drive that number down uh, that feel artificial, but really low. Well. So we'll, we'll come back and. So, I mean, just you got some uh, calculations to look at in your uh, totals line because we're not proposing the 440,000. Time salary. Should be the last line of that first highway department page. We're looking at line twenty three, right? Yeah, oh. line twenty three. Yes, yes, right there. All right. The three. Go hmm? ahead. That's the three hundred thousand for the, for road pave, saving for the roads this year. We we look to get another three hundred thousand on an article. But what that's for, you know, CFP discussion. That, that's that's warrant article. That's not. No, that's been. A, this is a standard. This is this is the same amount that's always in the operating budget. Yes. Yeah. Project. Yep. Um, you know, take, a, take a half a mile, reconstruct the whole thing, and take 
streets and all the roads have been, all the asphalt roads have been reconstructed. Nothing left to reconstruct. Mm -hmm. Down to maintenance. Of maintenance, of, yeah. Pavement maintenance. Um, everything, everything topped in asphalt has been reconstructed in the last, or built new. Seven fifty for Kelsey, eight fifty four for Cooper Hill. Cooper Hill is a little bit more extensive. It has a house foundation incorporated into that whole uh, culvert system. The, the head wall. Yeah. So rather than try and swallow seven hundred thousand dollars for one year, yep. or borrow. Which is an option, uh, but uh, we were suggesting historical three hundred thousand. How much life do we have left on both these two roads that you speak of? We're talking the, a couple years out. The engineer on on um, Kelsey Road has started the preliminaries. Um, I was assured that we we're all set as far as the three or four years with that. We have the barriers up, which was the concern of the guardrail. So that's taken care of. Cooper Hill Road will be evaluated within the next 10 days. Okay. And I'll have, an idea, I'll have a better idea on what the life expectancy is out there. Just a preliminary investigation shows that uh, the significant deterioration in the bottom of the culvert actually is probably eight feet of it missing it, and it's holes and spots all along the bottom of it. There's been a few sinkholes that's not too bad on the top, but uh, part of the head wall is showing significant deterioration and stuff, so. Um, so should that actually be bumped ahead of Kelsey? We started the engineering already on Kelsey Road. Um, we, we have restricted the weight limits over there and stuff. I mean, when we get the evaluation of the life expectancy on Cooper Hill Road, then we can evaluate that again, if this is a critical problem over there and it's something that's in intimate that's gonna fail. Which one gets more traffic? I probably Cooper Hill. Yeah. We don't have hard counts on the wall. One goes to 125, one goes between the other two. The other one's just a cut through to Barrington. Okay. Those are, uh, and to, to, to pile on an answer to your question, wait, those could also be. Cooper. Oh, Kelsey. I was under the impression that Kelsey didn't qualify. Kelsey won't qualify for state bridge. Okay, all right. But the ARPA money, the five hundred thousand. We, we might not. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. We're moving on to solid waste, unless you have any other questions for the highway budget. Well, I have one more question. All right. Fire away, John. <laughs> it's back on line 13. Um, <clears throat> yep. Because it's, it's a, such a significant increase. You know, how much does 400 tons of stone, I mean, it says added cost of stone use 
uh, stone we use on gravel roads, approximately 400 tons. How much area does 400 tons cover? Did you know, all the gravel roads last year to include what was the emergency lanes and to include what the, the town gravel class five gravel roads were. But you, my question is more: Is it 400 tons? Does that get us three miles of road, five miles of road, roughly? Can you? Well, what do we, what do we have between the two? Almost 20, but 20 miles. That would include what we did all around the lakes, which would under the emergency lanes and all the uh, class five town gravel roads. How many times did you, did you call? Did you apply the uh, stone? You, uh, it was definitely uh, once after every plowing event okay. and um, we did it in preventive maintenance wise when we uh, knew that we were going to have a misty or a rain event where we knew the roads already frozen we would apply that so that it would help us uh, get, gain traction which it did um, and it was um, as needed in specific spots that had uh, significant runoff that had poor drainage that was creating ice we're on the same page. You're talking about storm response gravel mixing in the stuff. stone, yes. Yeah. The hard rocks that are on yeah. the dirt road. Yeah. yeah. For traction. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, here we're not talking about other gravels that are like no, no that's 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 line gravel. twelve. Yes, okay. Right. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody's yeah. all talking the same line. Yeah. yeah. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well again that that's you, you, you that's it, like, yeah. That's another number that's a talking point but I'm good for right now Great. Uh, solid waste um, first three lines are at uh, zero percent increase uh, show a 18.2 percent increase and that's approximately 15 thousand a month in disposal fees um, as of right now, I have gotten, gotten uh, a couple of increases that are going to go into effect through the NRRA as far as January 1st, and those are just on tires and light bulbs. I have not gotten anything yet on increases under like waste management or Casella. Those are bigger. Those are the ones that are driving numbers up. That's what's there. Uh, Maintenance went up 25%. Uh, that's uh, an older baler we've been um, doing maintenance on. The Bobcat had some uh, significant uh, maintenance over the year done on it. And um, the building uh, needs a couple of things done to it as well. I've noticed, been noticing that there's some uh, boards missing on the back, on the fascia board, on the back side by the loading dock and things of that nature. Um, I'd like to see the place get painted as well. 20% um, on the, uh, the dues, that's for uh, certification renewals, training for employees. Uh, that's at a 500, it was 597 was the actual, so I just did 600. 11.4% change. The, tire, the tires are going up, uh, batteries are increasing, bulbs are increasing, things of that nature. You'll probably, you'll probably see Sean come forward with a big Sean, how familiar are you with uh, the way Northwood d does there? Pardon me? How familiar are you with how Northwood does their uh, recycling center? I'm not. You're not? Okay. I heard that they have a, a, a pretty good program over there where they uh, actually collect more 
money uh, from the solid waste uh, disposal is how uh, that's different than how we do it. Um, I'm not sure if that maybe that's something maybe we can reach out and say, how, how, what are you doing differently than what we're doing? Yep. Uh, you know, if that's a same, same general model, uh, or is it like a paper throw thing? Um, Forgive me, I mean, it was brought to my attention by a resident who's familiar with Northwood, so, um, um, and I meant to talk to you in private about it, but you know, since I was talking about solid waste, I figured that uh, maybe now would be the appropriate thing to bring it up. I, I know our collections are, are up now. Yeah. I, as far as that, I'm waiting for the accountant to give me a uh, spreadsheet on that to see that. I do know that we need to address um, our fees we talked about it last year, but it didn't feel it was at the right time to do anything like that there. So I'd be happy to go and talk to who, and people in Northwood and see what's going on over there. Just you know, food for thought. You know, yeah. Maybe they got something different than how we're doing it. Maybe they're doing the same, and I don't know. You know just mm -hmm. went by what a resident had uh, passed on to me, and maybe I share it with you. All right. Um, I don't have any other questions. On our recyclables, is there <clears throat> is there any kind of pre-processing or alternate processing we could do to increase the value of it? Like, for example, the glass. If we sorted glass by color as opposed to putting it in one pile, would that make a difference? We well, it would be an equipment startup cost because we would have to have a crusher and then a container to put it in, and so it would be another haul. Um, a lot of these things do produce some revenues, but you don't as much as you think you do because the hauling right now, trucking is very expensive, and that's a lot of the driving cost. So I'd be happy to look into that if you would like some more detail on that. Yeah, no, that'd be great. And as far as everything else going, I, I think we're doing everything right up there. Oh, we're not questioning that, Sean. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we're clear. We're not questioning that. I'm just saying as, as far as getting more money out of the place, I, I, I'm seeing that coming around. Okay. Thanks. Board have any other questions, comments? Once, John? I'm actually just reading to see if uh, if anybody charges a fee to use the dump. But we'll bring that up at a different time. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's it, John. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. John. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, should we roll right into the commission, or we should just press on with the chief? We're going to roll right into the commission. Chief, if you don't mind waiting. Yeah, I'll wait. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Chief. Who's coming down? <laughs> so, Chris, before they get started, don't we have any other than the uh, Oh, I see it's 21 here. Uh, the last sheet you have. Truck purchase, bottom right. What's that on? What truck is that? It's Bridge and Culvert. Let me see. Warren article. Okay. Possible Warren article. We've already got it. All right. Oh, yeah, Bridge and Culvert. Anything else they want to talk about? Okay. Are you folks ready? I yeah. think so. All right. <laughs> just a reminder to state your name and all that for the record. Uh, uh, Sam Demerit, uh, Chair of the Conservation Commission, uh, 213 Old Turnpike Road. Susan Mooney. Cheryl Smith, member of the Conservation Commission. Welcome. Thank Hello. you. Okay. Uh, 
I guess the one, one thing we were looking at is this uh, possible warrant article uh, that uh, the airport has suggested that we go in at a town meeting. Uh, this would be to uh, allow the town to spend funds from the conservation fund on a for an easement in town uh, that doesn't have uh, that the town does not have an interest in uh, as a you know, primary or secondary easement holder. There's a situation, I guess, where the there is a landowner who has heard that the uh, another town somewhere I don't know where. Had uh, town owned a piece of property that was set up, uh, had a conservation easement on it, and the town uh, came in and uh, put uh, rec fields in there. Essentially, a violation of the conservation easement, but uh, the town has the right to do that, especially the federal government and the state government, but I think the town also has it right to uh, change the, the thing, uh, the easement, for a public purpose. It's the recreation fields they, somebody figured was a public purpose. Anyway, this this one uh, uh, property that uh, Bear Park is working on, uh, it's only about a 20 acre piece property. It's uh, along one of the rivers in the I don't, I don't see it being used for you know public purposes other than maybe a, a fire station or something like that, you know, a, a substation or something. Like that. Anyway, let me let me read the some more just. Can I just sure. So what happened if there was there was additional people uh, at at the state level? into the existing um, Conservation Commission conservation easements. This Part B that Sam's going to read um, is now basically kind of required for anybody that's that's using conservation funds. So so if you have a conservation fund and the land only wants to have the um, land trust the, or land trust rather wants to have the closing costs say covered on it, but we're not going to hold it. Monitor it and it's like you know, six thousand dollars to help with closing costs or something like that. It allows that to be done. Right now, the way that the law is stated, the, the RSA is stated, this warrant has to be passed. That that has to be adopted by the town. So, is it like? I mean, this is new to me, but it's like, is it any kind of easement that there was this? Possibility that a town could come in and say, because we paid for this out of our fund, that we can do whatever we want with it now. Well, th th there's a process that th that has to go through. Uh, if uh, you want to use eminent domain on a piece of property, which could be a piece of uh, property that has a conservation easement on it, and that's with their any type of easement. But, but the caveat with that is that if the town does that, they have to compensate the owner current prices for that. Okay. So, so they, have to, they have to pay. Okay. Is it just possible for me to do that, or no? The, the only way the town to, would do that. The only way to do it is, is to pay the landowner. So you can't just have to pay the landowner the, the property value, the current property value on that. Okay. Um, but but this is this part of the RSA was passed just to clarify use of this, and now that this RSA is passed, it's requiring this to be passed. If you ever want to use money on the conservation fund, cover you know someone's donating a, a conservation easement to say Bear Paw, and Bear Paw is asking if the conservation fund can be used to cover the closing cost. <coughs> there there's no the town holds no easement and you know, executory interest in that property. Um, so in order to use the funds to design that fund. adopted 
once or the adopted? Adopted once. So it's uh, it's yeah. it's not for each project. It's done once, and as long as we've already got a conservation commission, only need to ask this, have this language as a warrant article in the past. Okay, so that's a warrant article that you guys will put forward. For the board would actually put. It. it could be done by petition too. Yeah, no, no, I, yeah. So it was a point my point was it's not a decision of the <coughs> board, it's a decision of the vote. <coughs> so would this be just <clears throat> I'm trying to grasp it because you know, I read it all but now I'm trying to process it all. If Fairpawn needed any money to put a property of, that's in Nottingham into an easement they'd be asking for us to take it out of the conservation fund. They could. They can, yeah. But they could, they could ask for it to come out. They, this, if, and by if, having if, this if, RSA. If, if, it, if, 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 if the Conservation Commission decides not to, and the Board of Selectmen decides not to, then it doesn't come out of the conservation fund. Both bodies have to agree to it. The way, the way these are, uh, setup was done at, at a town meeting uh, a number of years ago. Be regardless, anytime money is pulled out of a conservation fund in any town conservation commission, there has to be a public hearing. Mm -hmm. it's just yep. Nottingham has it set up to hold selectmen have a final vote on whether or not to. So at the end of the hearing, we do this with Sam chairs that public hearing. This doesn't change any of that. Well, the only thing that's different is because there was this amendment to the RSAs, if by some chance you, the town, take, again, a woman's bill, as a, a landowner that is, say, for instance, donating property to self, self just would like to have. This doesn't change the, the the availability of the government body to you know you take something by the end of the month. Yeah, I'm just still trying to grasp what, what's the purpose of it. If it works, if it's going to be the same. They're accustomed to giving money to uh, a uh, easement process. So right. Whether you're, you're, you're actually giving money for the land uh, or giving money for the easement, like you did in yeah. or you're supporting. We don't uh, want that. No, we do. In some cases, we do, but in other cases, we don't, because then, then we, by doing it this way, where you have no legal responsibility and you have the town has no interest in it, the town has no responsibility to do the monitoring to step in and, and fix something if it goes wrong. In all honesty, this was an RSA that was passed at the state level, so in, in order for the town to use any money out of the conservation fund. Scenario. This RSA has to be passed, or we can't. Unless, unless the town has 
executory interest in, or primary interest in easement. So given that this this sounds like it's new, do we know if there are any like potential gotchas that we can't foresee? Should this be I mean, I would probably advise to have that done, although I guess there's been a whole lot of land use attorneys that looked at this and looked at the original RSA language, as if that was right. But it would not be used in all cases. You know, it would be up to landowners to move in that direction if they had concerns, not only for the near future, but for the far future as well. Just because this particular RSA is adopted doesn't mean it's going to be a rule of thumb for all cases. And I, oh, honestly, I don't see it affecting a lot of what we but, but once it is, is adopted by the town. Do we have the time for you folks to read the statute and form an opinion and then come back and continue the discussion? When, when is the deadline for a public hearing for a warrant article? Is it January? Okay. Get the sponsor then. Yeah. I mean, the, the exact language, that's the exact language. But this is the warrant article, which is basically they shall the town adopt. I mean, okay. Shall the town vote to adopt the provisions of RSA 36-A, colon, 4-a, comma, I guess that's one small b, to authorize the Conservation Commission to expend funds for contributions to qualified organizations for the purchase of property interests or facilitating transactions related thereto where the property interest is to be held by the qualified organization and the town will retain no interest in the property? That's how the warrant article is supposed to read. And everything that I've read in the bear plot has sent over and as well as the association has the land use attorneys that have reviewed all of this highly advised me to change that. Basically takes it from them. So can you give me an example, I think you may have already, as to why a town would want to, you know, pony up some money to, through this article here, to pay for closing costs on a property they have no interest in? We get asked to do closing costs all the time and then usually we hold an executory interest in that property, which means that if all else fails and say self can't monitor the property anymore, et cetera, et cetera, then that would fall on the town. And in all honesty, with the number of people that we have on the Conservation Commission, the properties that we have to monitor now, it's really difficult for us to monitor properties. So that most of the monitoring that's done now, these are ones that have been held by the, set up before, a couple of them are developments 
that had common conservation land, but the town has to monitor those, and that's that's kind of overwhelming sometimes. For the so all these new cluster developments that we're putting one acre lots on that have 30 acres behind it that in conservation these, these are older we're ones. responsible the newer, right the newer ones don't so the, the, basically the conservation subdivisions don't have that they're set up so that there's a homeowners association that does that or somebody else holds that and has to do the monitoring a lot of the private um i say private but through bear pond self that we've done bear pond self do the monitoring on it. we don't have to do the monitoring on it but if you hold an executory interest and the first easement holder falls through, then you have to pick up the monitoring on it. Then you have to pick up any other, you know, enforcement of violations on it come through to the town. So by doing this, if the town doesn't hold any interest in it, you don't have to do that. In most cases, I don't think this is going to be what happens, but there are some, I guess, that want to have executory interest in on this property, and they'd rather the land trust hold that. And we still always have the right to say no about paying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We never lose that. So what happens in future years if the, um, you know, the qualified organization, whoever that may be, if they fail to monitor the property and the town has no executory interest, who, what happens then? I mean, who, you know, part of the town's interest, and I don't mean the town government, I mean all of us that live in the town, who want this land conserved, you know, who looks out for that public interest and, and, and guarantees the enforcement and the monitoring if the town, meaning, you know, the town government doesn't have the, the right or authority to do so? What happens then? I mean, you know, consider the, the erosion of trust and conservation easements if that happens enough, right? If people lose faith in that process, if no, no, I, I think that's a good point, Tony. But I, I, in all honesty, I can't think of a single situation that I'm familiar with. Or no, I, I just don't know whether it, whether it would fall back to the state. Uh, I think it does. Is the attorney general? Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, I think you, I think you might be right on that, Tyler. That yeah. it falls back to the attorney general. <coughs> the right. But you know, we know from or other dealings with the state, trying to get the state to pony up money to, you know, cover their share of costs in X, Y, Z is, is all but impossible. So that basically, to me, that means, you know, if it falls back to the state, that means it falls back to no one, right? I mean, the, the, the monitoring itself is walking bounds and finding out whether or not there's been any violations. It's mm -hmm. not that it's it's very hard and it costs a lot of money to do that, it's just time for and it's new, so <clears throat> we really don't know if this kind of situation would happen anyways, but um, I don't think it would be good if it did for, for conservation efforts in general, you know, two sides of that coin. I, I, I think we, there should be some more time spent on this. Uh, obviously, we're not prepared to, mm -hmm. to, to make any decision on this, obviously. Chris. I, I, would, I would advise having the other towns that have passed, because other towns have already passed it. What year was it passed? Strafford. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's been out there for quite some time. Okay. Well, there's a question, too. If it's been out there for a while, why are we doing it now? Actually, be, I think. Probably because the section B was well, section B recently recently done. So okay. not want to do anything here. Part A actually lets you probably outside of town bounds. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So do we want? Um, what do we want to do in terms of getting uh, okay, more? I'd be in favor of having the attorneys look at it. And, and the attorney can answer that question. 
Yeah. Asked. What happens if if I was thinking that the if the bear if the land trust goes defunct, I think they're supposed to see if there's another land trust that will or another entity that would pick up, you know, everything that they've covered. Mm -hmm. In their bylaws. Mary, did you have? Yeah, just two thoughts. If we adopt the no, it has to be passed separately. And is this applied retrospectively, or would it be acquisition going forward? I would ask the attorney about that. Yeah, the answer is yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You're showing up a lot. Are you running again? <laughs> I, I assure John I am not running. Oh, I'm just going to be here to kind of We welcome you. <laughs> We, no, we only have the one case of an academic question, but yeah. um, what happens if you don't have the we just recently right. approved some money, but what if that nothing comes with that for all those three? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, um, that's another good question for the attorney. That's a good one. We've never I mean we've never had that happen. We've had we've had projects that are in you know, in planning stages that have Fallen through, but never something that we've expended money for. Okay, so that has no. That has not happened. It's different. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, when when they get to the point where the land trust is looking for, um, you know, coverage to, to say, for instance, to do a survey, they're and they're pretty far advanced, and they've had those conversations with the landowner, and they've had other lining up other funds, etc. They're pretty confident about before they get into that and ask for conservation funds. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we've, we've never had that happen where we've expended money for it either. Most of the time, it's it's for the uh, yeah survey. I mean, certainly, when you, when you get to a certain point where you're at closing costs, that project is already. But that's another question you could have. I mean, we've never had that situation from any stuff for. First time for everything. Other than questions to the attorney? Shall we come back um, for your first meeting in December? And we can talk about easement monitoring that we've done and maybe a couple of other things and bring you folks up to date. Uh, well, you're hot and heavy on budget. Thank you. 
things like that. Yeah, for, um, from us, it was just you had mentioned maybe getting back together in December to chat, but I guess that. We anticipate. Do you find that you're comfortable with this in two weeks and yeah. yeah. Get the opinion. Yeah. Back in here. If not, then have another as long, yeah, as long as it's not. Are we all set? Well, I just had one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, what does your end of year balance look like? I didn't hear the question. Your end of year balance, what's in your account? What's in the uh, account? I have no idea what's in there. Nobody's, nobody sent me anything. To... Unless we specifically ask for what the balance is on the conservation fund, we not get it. Oh, oh, the, oh, the, oh the, the, the conservation fund? Um, I saw something fairly recently, mm -hmm. like 400. Uh, Where do we get a balance on our? 424. I thought you. I thought you were talking about our budget. Um, about the last time. I don't think that's changed much since the last time that we came in. Is that with you guys? No, I, I, the last I saw was about 422,000. 422. Again, I, I don't think that's changed. Okay. No, it's always good to get an update. I'm not sure. Yeah. The, the, the annual report had thirty-eight, uh, three hundred eighty-six thousand three fifty-five. It's right around the beginning of August that we came. July, July twenty-third. <coughs> and there wasn't a whole lot that was projected. Any other questions? No, I'm good. No, uh, thank I, you. I do. I do have one question. Uh, I somehow I got this uh, uh, list of uh, current use <coughs> by year, and I know that the conservation easements in the tax deeds are, are for tax purposes are listed as current use. I didn't know. If if the, that in, this included the easements or just the other land that's in current use? The list from 2008 to. Yeah, it's the assessed valuation and the number of acres that are in oh, current okay. use. Assess, They're showing up in the tax records as, as current use. Oh, in parallel, it doesn't guarantee current use. The landowner may not have current use. So, correct. But, but if, if, an most would, but if an easement goes in on land that's in current use, that land still retains in current use. Then it would be, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. it's, if it's in current use, it'll show up on that. Okay. The town is still collecting taxes on those properties. At the current use rate. At the current use rate, yeah. I mean, because we had, had one uh, easement holder who, who apparently looked at the tax records and saw that uh, he was being taxed at current use, so he figured he could do whatever he wanted to, not realizing that he had a, a restrict, uh, conservation restriction on, the, on his property. Yeah, but they often almost always I was just wondering if there was some way to on the tax records you could you put a star or something you know, that indicated it was a conservation restriction or conservation easement. So that there were, it would be noticeable. And I think that runs into case ownership of the piece of property and because the easement is filed with the Records with deeds. It doesn't. Look, you know, looking at that that easement language, 
husk and soul. Isn't that one of the layers when you look at the tax maps online? Can't you see the conservation easements as a colored zone? Uh, if you do, that is coming from somewhere. We don't have that in that form. We don't have that. You know, we can, we can poach it from somebody else and lay it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's coming out of the entry. Is it the situation was a, a property of the Highlands um, that had a substantial acreage and a potential buyer was told by his agent that the property was taxed in current use and could he take his ATVs out there and, and have, have fun and no he didn't know that it was restricted uses of that property we have a couple other uh, developments where uh, there's some common land and uh, it just because it's closest to one owner, he thought that you know he could do whatever he wanted on it. And, and by rights, it, was, he had, it was, had to be a decision of everybody in that development. Right. Right. All of the See you next month. Thank you. What up, Chief? seconds to get set up that's okay right so uh, can we uh, you know at some point address the audio is it still bad <laughs> we were looking at we got a couple of quotes on like the zoom room refit you know modernize the camera on the broadcast equipment to incorporate the that's yeah it's it discussed at CIP totally do it with there's not any better well that was last year changed okay, okay. All right. I'm sorry go ahead it wouldn't be that oh. um do you guys want me to go right into it or do you want to hear what's happened at the PD or why don't you give us an update on the PD okay uh busy yeah, obviously we're going into we we had a busy summer um and we're just been maintaining busyness um I have an officer that's in the academy the full-time academy um he is slated to graduate on December 17th um, which is good, so that'll we'll get an extra, I say extra body, but we'll get a body back to alleviate some um, overtime and stuff like that, help out um, doing really well. Uh, the academy was um, full-time in session where they were staying um, overnight at the academy. We have a residential academy. Oh, they, were back back. they were back, yeah, but there was a cluster of uh, COVID, so they're now uh, commuter, commuter. Uh, and and uh, so, yeah, it's been tough. He, he, uh, that individual is vaccinated, so it, it didn't affect him um, at all. But there's a, 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 a lot of the academy, um, even though they're going to walk in the graduation, um, they won't be certified um, because they can't do a lot of the training. So um, I think, you know, I guess kudos to him for uh, doing that um, and, you know, staying on top of that. I still have an officer that is overseas um, doing okay is still slated to come back at the uh, beginning of the year sometime um, after January 1 um, and he might just need some time to decompress I think um, but then he'll be you know right back at it um, I'm down a part-timer um, I have an open spot haven't really fully like full-on uh, started advertising um, word of mouth at this point and had a couple of applicants and um, 
trying to do a process, but right now it's really tough um, to find to find anybody. Um, we'll get into that too when I talk about my part-time budget. Um, did a lot of training this year. Um, we have an officer that got certified as an accident reconstructionist. Um, a lot of uh, in-house certifications, defensive tactics, um, OC spray. Like I said, trying to keep stuff in-house that we don't have to, um, you know, go out outside to get this training. Um, we have to keep up with stuff like that yearly, so it was good to get um, some officers on board with that. Did a lot of joint training with the fire department. Um, shout out to the chief over there for getting us involved with um, a handful of stuff, actually. Um, utilized the drone. The drone um, has been useful in at least three occasions. Um, offered her assistance to other agencies. Um, so that worked out good. I want to thank you guys for that. Um, I'm trying to think, well, there's so much. Uh, just finished up, um, in, in I think it'll roll out in the next couple of weeks. Um, all officers uh, have the ability to uh, use and administer Narcan. Um, we still have a big um, drug problem in New Hampshire. Um, and in Nottingham as well, not, not to say big, but there's still instances where um, that um, medication needs to be used. Um, we usually, you know, if we have an opportunity to get there, um, you know, before anybody, it'd be good to use that. We've had situations where um, we didn't have it and it would have came in handy, myself personally. Um, so I kind of pushed for that a little bit, work with uh, the fire chief on getting that rolled out. Um, and it's gonna be, I think a go in a couple of weeks, so that's important. Um, we carry the AEDs in the cruisers, and now you know the Narcan will be right with it. So if we can use it, um, that'll be good. I'm trying to think what else? Yeah, a lot of training, a lot of good training. We're busy, um, just trying to keep up with things. But good stuff, all good stuff. I uh, I can't complain. The the officers that I have of, I, I mean, I can't say enough. I've really stepped up, and uh, they make us, they make me proud every day. So that's everything all right let's dive into okay your let's dive into it sure mm -hmm. um i was going to use my computer but you know thank you to chris for this huge i don't even i feel like i don't even need my glasses my huge uh display um so pd salary uh you'll notice that it went down um and i put in their covid stipend and two retirement payouts that's just to say that we used some of the money i guess last year to pay some uh payouts and that's probably why it was increased a little bit um in the covid stipend um, so that was the only thing good about this budget is that went down. <laughs> and then uh, over time, uh, so for next year, um, I did kind of a rough estimate. I went over with all of the tricentennial events that are going to happen. Um, tried to do some, you know, you know, maps and charts and where I would need officers and based on what they, you know, what they have slated for events and what they, um, you know, the information that I have so far. Um, so that went up about $8,000. Um, I, I put it in my budget. I, I don't know if that money is going to come from from them or not. Um, but obviously, we need we need to be there for safety. So I put it in there just so we could see what that looked like. And that's overtime. Using it our, is our personnel. So it is. Yeah, exactly. So that's us. That that would be using in uh, perfect scenarios um, the officers that we have now at um, overtime. So it'd be at time and a half. Um, yeah, and, I, and again, I can explain that more, and I think more, the more that we understand what they're going to be doing, um, yeah. you know, that, exact, does that make sense? So yeah. if you have any questions about that, yeah, we can start, yeah, that, okay. Yeah. Um, and then, so then the part timeline, I did increase it a little bit, only because at only 10 hours a week, uh, based on an average salary of a part-time officer, which isn't very much, it came out to be a little bit more money, so. But that would just be ten. That would be an officer working basically a shift a week, just you know one shift to cover, um, possibly two. Um, you know, anything call out uh, people that are on vacation, anything like that. Um, next item is just uh, nothing changed there. Uh, next set special duty that there's nothing there. That's hard to explain I don't know that special duty Chris maybe you can help me out with that uh, yeah
special duty covers? Details. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> next line, prosecutor services. It stayed the same. There's no increase there. Um, next line, postage. Uh, we ran into it. So we have the MDTs now. Uh, we've run into situations where they need to be um, serviced, right? And so more, oh, sorry, mo the cars. Yeah, yeah. Mo mobile data terminal, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the uh, computers in the cars. Yeah. Um, like I said, we've run into situations that they need to be serviced through like patrol PC um, and they need to be sent out. And so to do that, we need to put insurance on them to send, you know, to send them via postage and it's quite expensive. Um, th this year, for some reason, I mean, we had an MDT that went out like twice. I get another one out that's out right now. Um, to send it out, it's like $167, I know. I thought Help they came out, on Tony. site to do. No. They don't. No, I, I thought so too. Yeah, no. So um, there's a lot that goes into the MDT, different things that need to be fixed. So um, patrol PC fixes a lot of a lot of the stuff on it. Technically, term speaking, I'm not an IT person. And then, you know, an individual up at Rockingham County will do like their side of it, you know, as far as like IMC updates, the software that we use to put in, you know, tickets and write our reports and stuff like that. Um, and then there's a side that actually like our IT person, um, you know, at the PD, you know, can go in there and, and fix some things. So, and I have a couple of individuals like in-house at the PD that are in charge, you know, mobile super, super users, they call them, that can do, you know, what they can do. But, but a lot of it, there's a lot of that goes on into them, honestly, and they're a big ticket item and, and even FirstNet. So we use FirstNet for, our ser you know, service provider, and there's connectivity issues a lot, so it's a lot of troubleshooting with them. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's normal or not normal, and I can tell you that every town around us uses Verizon. We went with FirstNet with, with the, um, the thought that, yeah, FirstNet are gonna be for uh, first responders. Um, does that make sense, am I, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so we, we made that switch, that jump quickly, you know, when we first got it, we're like, let's just use FirstNet, that's where we should be going. Um, and we didn't go with Verizon, but we've had a lot of connectivity issues in Nottingham. It's a cellular network like any other, <laughs> it just uses different frequencies, but yeah. it lives on the same towers. Right. So, so maybe it's not, I mean, again, I, I just know it costs a lot to send them out. So if we, you know, these items we need we have four of them and if they go down and we troubleshoot and do the best we can and patrol pc says you need to send it to us so we can fix it there's the cost there and i don't know i can't speak to why it didn't reflect in last year's budget or why that wasn't an issue but it's an issue now Did, I, yeah i'm not questioning no, it's fine. no i'm not questioning yeah. it i'm just trying to understand yeah that, the <laughs> Remote access. No, no. I mean, if it's if something has happened to the computer that it has to be sent out, that's a mechanical problem. You can't remotely fix a mechanical well, what problem. To the, like, and I'm just curious. I'm yeah, curious. no, yeah, it's it, it's question. just <laughs> like it's just like your computer at home, right? It works mm -hmm. beautifully until it doesn't, right? When 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 computer hardware fails, it's like that. There's usually a little warning, right? Like when your hard drive crashes, yeah, yeah, okay. all of a sudden you get a blue screen or, a, mm -hmm. or one of those sad faces on your screen and, it's, yeah. and it's, you look it up and it's like, oh, my hard drive died, great, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then yeah. you have to send it off for repair. So, um, so are you there know, different types of those? Like, uh, again, just- mm, No, go, first. you're good. Uh, if, if that's <laughs> happening, is there, Jeez. because are there like different models that are more prone to this? type of behavior than others? No, what it, what it is, and I, you know, I, I know this because I, you know, I did the patrol PC quota at UNH right before I left there, um, but these laptops, they're, they're more, they're more than just the kind of laptop that you and I would have. There's a lot of, there's a lot of devices in there that, uh, for example, the, uh, this year's patrol C PC models have a thermal imaging scanner. Mm -hmm. So you can take it out of the car, you know, if, if there's a kid missing in the woods at night, right. you can actually scan the woods with Got your it. laptop. Okay. You know, there's, there's, there, are, there are additional devices 
in these laptops that are not in your typical okay. home user PC. And, it, and it, because they're mobile uh, in the cruisers, are they like, black and better way of saying, getting sh shaken more and more prone to? Um, well, they have a they have a dock, right? Most of them are, are have a dock so yep, that they can be removed from the yeah. vehicle, and they are they are attached. Uh, typically, with the Ford, you have Ford cruisers. We do, yeah. Ford, okay, yeah. yeah. So with the Fords, the 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 dock mounts to the dashboard frame. Right? There's like a coin tray at the top of the dash, and that comes out, yeah. and the dock attaches to the frame of the dash. So it's fairly well insulated against the jostling. And most of them have a, uh, a solid state hard drive yeah. as opposed to a spinning drive that's yeah. more vulnerable to that kind of vibratory damage. Yeah. Um, but there's still, you know, you remember just like the vehicles, they, you know, they have to run 24, 7, 365 where, yeah. you know, your, your home computer, you know, you'll use it for two or three hours a night after you get out of work, then you shut it down for the night. Right. So it's right. like one eighth of the, of the duty life cycle of a computer meant for a police cruiser. Okay. I was just curious. No, it's all. great. I mean, like I said, it's, you know, it's all like, I hate to say it, new to me too. I mean, we, you know, we haven't had an MDTs for a long time and these are the issues that are gonna come up with them, I believe. I, it's you just know, the cost of doing business. It is, in yeah. talking to other chiefs, like I said, it's not something that they're like, oh yeah, that sounds crazy. They're like, yeah, it makes sense. Um, Chief, how old are these now? They're on the second or third year? This, so 2022 will be the third year, I believe. Third so year. this so, is the second year. Right. So typically computers have a five-year life right. cycle. Right. So once you hit that three-year mark, mm -hmm. that's where you consider a computer middle-aged. Right? Yeah. And that's where the weird things start happening. Mm -hmm. Right. And then once you hit year five, you that's when you say it's time to replace it. Mm -hmm. So I guess right. my, where I was going with, with, with that is, is this going to be enough? If, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, you know, exactly. we tried the best we can. We don't anticipate failures, but I think the most, I think we sent th three, you know, sent okay. one out, sent either one or two out three times. We, you've done three times we had to get that insurance on it. So I, I don't, I mean, that would, you know, I don't think you'd be going out more than three times a year. I mean, that's. Okay. I didn't need to launch a 45 minute no, discussion. No, I, I asked myself, <laughs> I literally, when I was doing that, I'm like looking at postage, I'm like, why is postage so much? What did I, what am I, mailings? And then I'm like, it's the MDTs. Every time we send one out to do the insurance. They are heavy. It's a lot of insurance, and we have to insure them. Yeah, but I mean, the laptops themselves oh, yeah, are they're heavy. they're very heavy. Compared to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they call them tough brooks, you know? Like I said, yeah. like you explained it, I mean, they are meant for rigorous conditions, that's for sure. But, yes, okay. So then, uh, next item is just uh, dues and conferences. Uh, it's up just a little bit because uh, New Hampshire Chiefs Association do went up, dues went up, so that's why the dues went up. Um, I'm a part of that association, so um, nothing changed with publications. Um, so the next line would be training. Um, that's gone up. Um, this is anticipation of uh, 24 hours um, of training uh, per officer. Um, it's going to gradually change every year with the uh, LEAC Commission. Um, it, the recommendation before we had to do eight hours of in-service training um, and so now they're pushing obviously and it makes sense to do 40 hours but they're going to incrementally you know they're not going to just push it on um, agencies to do it in one year so next year will be the 16 hours and then it'll go you know to the 24 or 32 and then the 40 um, so that's the increase there chief yes you know for those folks at home LIAC is yeah, like law enforcement account accountability commission. It's the new commission that they formed, um, you know, at the state level to make sure that there's checks and balances in law enforcement with with everything that you know went on and has gone on. Um, and so the commission has made a lot of recommendations, you know, as far as um, tra training hours for officers, um, what they consider in service, what they consider, um, you know, that counts towards it. Um, They've also, they're also gonna take, make a lot of changes, I think, to even um, part-time academy and full-time academy stuff. Um, there's discrepancies there. Um, so we're gonna see some changes with that. And, and like I said, so that, that's increased. That, that training line also includes, and I, I don't know if this has ever been talked about, but my, uh, our ammunition, our ammunition that we use to train with. Um, so firearms qualifications, that, that's that line there. So that's the cost of ammunition. 
whatever you use for our pistols and our rifles to qualify. Does that make sense? Um, and training mileage, anytime an officer, you know, goes to training, they're, they're entitled if they're not able to take a cruiser, which happens, um, they get paid reimbursement for mileage. Um, so that's spelled out there. Are there any? Where it's in that training line, is that what you mean? All of all ammunition is in that training right, line. Right, yes. Yes. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And that, I mean, and that's gone up. Just, I mean, the ammunition has, you know, it, if you guys don't go, you know, it's gone up a lot, so. Try to make it make sense, and so that's that. Um, any questions about that? No. Uh, testing, say the same. That's a, if I get a no officer that um, goes to uh, psychological evaluation and um, polygraph. That hasn't changed. Those, there's still fees associated with that. Um, so I mean, I guess that number could change if you know something happens, but that's the same. Um, uniforms and cleaning. You can see an increase there. Um, that's for a couple of reasons. Um, an officer needs a new uh, ballistic vest, so a new, you know, Kevlar bulletproof vest um, in layman's terms. And then um, it includes a uniform update. Um, we're going to go to an outer vest carrier. Um, it's a lot more um, comfort comfortable. Um, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot more modern. Um, you guys won't even notice the difference between what we look like. Um, but essentially, just takes it off from the uh, bulletproof vest off from the suction of your body and puts it in a carrier. Um, so a lot of times, a lot of police work uh, deals with report writing and we're spending, you know, we have to spend some time at the police department doing different things and to take that pressure, you know, off of our backs and bodies and hips, it's a remove, you just detach it and you can set it in the chair next to you while you're typing, you get the call, you get whatever you need to do and you just, you put it back on. Again, you wouldn't see it, there's no change, the uniform looks the same. Um, but it's a more modern, updated, um, better style fitting um, piece of equipment. That line also increased a little bit just to reflect. We'd never had, uh, technically speaking, a um, uniform allowance. And so what that means is, you know, an officer gets outfitted when they first start, start here in Nottingham, right? And they get, you know, a certain amount of pairs of pants, a certain amount of shirts, you know, yada, yada, yada. You know, hats, gloves, a winter coat, a spring coat. Um, but that doesn't, that line never included, you know, so you know you need new boots sometimes, or you rip your pants and you need a new pair of pants and they're $130. Um, that includes uh, monies that I could set aside and tell officers that they have um, a uniform allowance. So does that make sense? And do you have any questions about that? So that's where that increase went from. We never had that before, so I think that to me, from my standpoint, you know, an officer should know, like if they anticipate that they need a new, you know, something that year, things cost a lot of money. I mean, even if you made it, you know, $350, they could go through that by buying a pair of shirt, you know, two pairs of shirt, pants and a shirt. Um, and our equipment, our, you know, our pants, and it wears down, it, it goes quickly. Um, yeah. Seem like there's any questions about that? Okay. Um, that, that historically would be a paid chief. I mean, not a one pair of yeah. pants, and a chief has money laying around in the right. center. Then, then you get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very Christmas. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. 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 It's like I, yeah, I went eight years with a pair of boots that I kept falling on the ice. Like, you know, it's fine. It's just. No, it's not I think, fine. no, I mean, but it's I think it fine. just makes sense to say, like, you have, you know, this money and. You know, and I'll be able to, I'll make sure it makes sense and, you know, they, they get what they get and then that's it. And, you know, you because I know the thoughts, oh, what if you have people that abuse it? No, they can't. This is the dollar amount that they get. You know, if somebody keeps saying, I keep ripping my pants, well, there's an issue, right? Do you know what I mean? Uh, any, up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I ripped my pants again. Sure you did. <laughs> right, so anyway, they won't cross them. <laughs> you know, if there's like uh, an incident where an officer has to chase somebody through the woods and, their, and their right. pants get torn open yeah. and, and stay there all out of, you know, maybe it was a brand new pair that they just got right. and they burned up all of their allowance. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to still. We're going to, there's going to be a l funds left over to get that. Exactly. That'll yeah. be, 
there's a little bit of cushion absolutely okay. and that brings up a good point and that does happen like you know people don't like to think it all the time absolutely yep um okay so then the next <coughs> one uh nothing nothing changes with software licensing um service contracts say the same i mean like i said i put notes in there just to let you guys know what that what all that entails i will say though that the service contracts um that can go down a little bit that that's not accurate um because um imc um i paid this year for 2022 so that's like 2600 dollars that that line item can go down does that make sense so that's all set you know um, they're going away right yes <laughs> Yes, that's annoying. I have to go to a meeting tomorrow about like a new system because I am CSI. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Uh, do 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 do. Next. Any question? That's good. You guys are an easy crowd. Um, office supplies, you know, stay the same. Um, office equipment, uh, staying the same. I do need everything that you see on there is the same. I need an extender. Um, I, a lot of that stuff is Chinese. I don't know what eCorona service backup, AP, Tony, you know that. Acronis is a backup utility, which, um, I mean, there are backup utilities already built into Windows Server, so I don't really know that you Yeah, I mean. That, but it could just be that that's the personal preference of your IT it guy. Is, yes, yes, and, yeah. and, and it's fine because She's super safe about stuff. Our stuff is locked down tight for, you know, um, yeah. And then two computers. Uh, I have um, actually uh, supervisor computers that are were inherited from other people and they're very old. Um, and they have many issues and they need to be swapped out. So, uh, gasoline, uh, same thing, stays the same. Uh, I know it looks crazy. I mean, it says we only spent $6,888. Uh, but I did talk to Betsy about that. That's not accurate. She hasn't been able to. She said that there's still some more that she's got to put in there, I think. Um, and so I would, you know, I don't know that, John, you brought up a good question. You know, can that go down maybe a couple grand? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what gas prices are going to be in um, 2022 or what we, you know, because I, I think that was a good question. But. Um, well, you didn't go up. No, I mean, I, I feel like it's safe and fair to keep it at that price, 16000 just in case. I mean, we run four cruisers. The town's 46-something square miles. We run a 10-hour shift. It's easy. We easily put 110, 120 miles on a cruiser a night. Um, and then, you know, we use the flex card, the gas card. That's a great system. Um, so it's whatever price at the pump, I think. And we must get a discount, I believe, too. I think that we do. I know, it's t tough. Um, but again, just seeing, you know, I'd be looking, you know, if we don't spend that much, maybe that can go down a little bit too. I, I don't know, but I don't know what 2022 is going to be like. Um, uh, cruiser maintenance, again, just stay the same. But that it, that does include um, our ATV that we have. Um, are you guys familiar with that? We have a four wheeler. Okay. Um, and also too, uh, to, so we built um, a shed. Uh, we have a shed at the PD now. That's out back. That stores. Um, that ATV, um, some, uh, a lot of the uh, signage and barricades that we have at the police department, we were able to um, take from the um, old part of this building and you know, get it out of there, get it out of the way, get our own uh, storage center, which is perfect, um, and get, get that trailer and that ATV in there. And uh, a shout out to Sean and the highway department because he came in and he, they put that slab in there to do that, some nice rock and crushed stone or whatever. It was awesome that they did that. Um, but so yeah, that's what that is. Um, so this is the next line that I went up, the equipment line. Um, yeah, so I can tell you that the price to outfit a cruiser um, from, because of inflation has gone up substantially. Um, yeah, and we have a cruiser now too, and not only has it gone up, I mean, we're, it's not even gonna get here anytime soon. You know, we're looking at, and you guys probably know more about this than me, you know, big ships or whatever that can't dock and yada 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 I mean the new cruiser that we got for 2021 um, is all lettered up it's all ready to go but it has no equipment in it um, because we're just waiting for that to arrive so it's been sitting there for a couple of weeks and um, but so those prices have gone up um, like I said that's a replacement for the 2022 nothing's changed with it it just the price went up 
but that does include um, printers for e-tickets, and I can explain that. Um, when we got the MDTs, uh, the, the point was to go um, digital, right? To go like all- Paperless. Paperless, thank you. Um, and we haven't. We, we still handwrite tickets, um, and we have the capability to use the printers, we, you know, to have them. We just never got them, and I, again, I don't know how, you know, how that didn't happen, but um, they're about $1,000 a piece for each cruiser, so it's about $4,000, and that will allow um, officers the ability to just, you type in, actually, you can just scan the license manually, and everything will be uploaded, and it just prints out. Um, and it also, it goes directly, um, if you have, you know, the capability, which we will, you know, right, right to the uh, DMV. Um, so I just say everything's digital now. Courts don't want us um, to use. Um, They're still printing something out that the the gets. traditional speed tickets are a pre-printed multi-layer mm -hmm. form. Well, I've never gotten one, so I didn't know. Uh, it was like, yeah, you know the yeah. the white, the yellow. <laughs> There's like the white, the yellow, and the pink copy. Like this archaic, like four, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's yeah, yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> sorry. We're not filling that out anymore. Well, those well, we are, are insanely expensive. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Those multi layer forms. Is. So this, this will be. Right, and it uses yeah. traditional, right. like normal yeah. paper. Yeah. Yeah. It's a formality just to hand them the, yeah. you know, thing, yeah. but yeah. everything is. Right. Right. No, I understand. And that's why I was just questioning and clarifying the use of the word paperless. Uh, yeah, you're technically right. Yeah, and so again, that's you know to do that, and I, I can't. Start, I mean, I hate to say you know the the courts don't want to see that, so they don't want it. They, I can't. I can barely get you know those stack of tickets that we get. We have to go and beg them at the Candia District Court because they're very expensive and they're like not making them anymore. And they're like, why don't you have? It? I'm like, we don't have it yet. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, That's the paperless part. Yeah, yeah. Because no, traditionally, I get it. I get it. like either yeah. that yellow or that pink copy yeah. would have to be mailed to the state, yep. yeah, and then saw a court date set X number of months down the road. But now, you know, with with the, the current system, you know, uh, you know the the J one network that they have in the state—that's what they call yeah, it. Um, like at the at the time that that ticket is created and printed out in the vehicle and hand it to the end, you you know, to the to the operator. Um, it, it's also simultaneously transmitted up to the state. So it's a real-time data transfer as opposed to mailing a piece of paper. Got it. Yep. So. Cuts down on like human error too, honestly. So you can't, even if you type something in wrong, they're gonna capture the right name. I can't tell you, like, yeah, anyway, it's better. Okay. Um, yeah, Thank you. and then a digital speed sign, um, that's something that, uh, I don't know if you guys ever seen them in communities, but. So we get a lot of RVC motor vehicle complaints here in Nottingham. It's a small rural community with a lot of back roads, a lot of dirt roads, a lot of, um, you know, situations where, you know, we, t we field calls like, oh, everybody's, you know, speeding on Smoke Street or Kelsey Road. And so we do direct your patrols. We try um, our best in uh, certain times of day to be in certain areas, right? But we can't be everywhere. Um, so what a, what a digital speed sign is, it's, it's used in a lot of communities. You know, Northwood has one, Stratford has one. Um, it's that blinking, like, you know, you know, you're going, speed them is 25 and you're going 40 and it's like beep, 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 beep and it blue light flashes and it's that reminder to people to slow down to, you know, you're not doing that. Uh, it also works as a message board. So if there is a road that's shut down, if a road is flooded, um, we can put that message on there. I can have an app on, we, our officers can have an app on their phone um, to do it. So we can be, we don't have to, you know, go out there and physically do it. We can do it remotely. Um, comes with a trailer. You know, so we can trailer, all of our cruisers have tra uh, trailer hitches, so we'll be able to put them in locations. Everything safety-wise is locked up, so people can't damage it. You know, you probably have that question of like, oh, um, you know, can people go out there and do that? Um, the fire chief had mentioned that he would um, help with some costs with that. I, I, you know, I don't. It sounded like he put like half the cost of it is. Yeah, and so then that probably isn't an accurate number for that line either, that might. Oh, so you put the I did. Costs, I put right? it 100%. Same thing, and I just caught it too with Nixel guys. Um, the fire chief um, is uh, willing to have that come out of the emergency management um, funds. Yeah, so I, that number will go down for Actually me too. Actually, better. 
Yeah, yeah, and that appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, so that you know the uh, the lighting for school zones. Yeah, I was thinking of that. You know, you ever see those little digital speed signs that yeah, go so, out on the telephone pole? It would be nice. So, to So yeah, so I, so I will tell you, this has been my like. I've been on the phone with DOT, playing phone tag for like, what is this? Four or five months. I started in like July, trying to get um, that area of Route 152 to be a school zone. We don't. That's not technically a school zone, right? Like right in front of the school, right? And it's bizarre to me that it's not, and it should be. So the point is, is that the speed, right, is 40 through 152, and that, some people go 50, 55, 60, yep. whatever. Um, and it doesn't have the flashing light, the blah, blah, blah. Um, the state will come out and put all the equipment in for free. They, they'll set everything up, they'll put the sign, minute, you know, reduce speed ahead, 35. The only thing that we would have to be, um, you know, in charge of doing is making sure that, um, you know, if it's for whatever reason it gets knocked down or whatever, you know, or like our highway department could go in and just put it back up or do repairs on it or whatever the case may be. Um, and then um, setting the times, but an officer could do that. I could have my officers in charge of, you know, at seven o'clock or whatever the case may be. And then again, at 2 p.m. or whatever, um, make it so the light flashes. I'm in the works with that. I think that that makes sense. Um, and again, all of that stuff will be free other than, again, if it does, for whatever reason, get damaged. So before you do that, do you have to get that area designated as a school? The state, the New Hampshire DOT will designate it. So they'll just do it at your request? Yeah, so I talked to the principal, the school principal, and he, you know, it doesn't, he's like, I don't, yeah, I mean, you have our blessing. I, I think it should be a uh, school zone as well for safety. I don't know why there it's not. There has been a school there for the past 20 yeah, years. Yeah, this is just really bizarre. Yeah, that's yeah. why we never had Yeah, that. and so we can't, I mean, I hate to say it, like we can't, um, yeah, it needs, that's just my, my opinion as a police chief, it should be a school zone. Okay. And I'm trying. Yep. Okay, um, and so yeah, and so the, then to that end, the Nixle can be, you know, that part of, I think it was software licensing or whatever I have it in, that can go down too because that's gonna be emergency management. Um, okay, so do, 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 do radio repair, keep that the same. We don't know, Th those are for our portable radios. And we, so we just don't know like if something's gonna happen to them. We could have years where we don't need anything and then the next year it's $900 for OME to look at them and fix a toggle or a switch or whatever the case may be. So I kept that the same. Um, telephone, internet, I, I don't have much to offer you other than I don't even see those bills. Maybe Chris has something. Uh, to <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Cool. So both of them will go to zero? No. No. Okay. Okay. And then uh, the next line, Dare, I did get, <laughs> that was what I missed, but you guys saw it. Um, I was able to get an officer certified to teach uh, Dare. We haven't had Dare for, this is two years. Um, because of the pandemic, I got pulled from the school, um, you know, in March of 2020 and then haven't been back. Um, but we're gonna start it back up in 2022. I have an officer that was certified. We're gonna teach it um, to the fifth graders up there. Um, and the cost of supplies have gone up, you know, to, so that's to get, you know, we do, um, you know, like the, the pen, like a pencil and an eraser for the, for the kids. At the end, they'll do some kind of graduation ceremony that involves a cake um, and get their t-shirts. Um, and the, pricing that stuff out is super expensive. When I uh, was in charge of the DARE program, the t-shirts alone went over $1,000. Um, and so then you think, oh, where did that other money come from? There is, you know, donation money that we get. I can tell you in the years that number has gone down. Um, you know, we will do some, uh, which will be great, um, you know, funds, like uh, fundraisers for it. Um, but having it at $1,000 is just not realistic to get T-shirts or pizza for graduation or a cake, and that's what we do for the kids. Um, even with donations, you know, that alone is, probably two thousand dollars so questions comments concerns okay uh, 
miscellaneous. I just I put it up a little bit. That's our funds that we use. Um, like if somebody somebody dies, um, you know, we had um, a police officer, you know, recently in the area that that died. Um, so we'll send you know a fire arrangement or something. Um, people at the PD, they, it's just been a tough year. Um, they've had you know parents die and stuff. So that's like money that we you know as a department um, we can send flowers or something like that to just to explain it. Um, I went over it and I just didn't think that was enough so and then the cruiser um, that's the cost of the cruiser um, that would be a 2022 and then they're going to give a twelve thousand five hundred dollar trade-in for the 2018 wow. I think that's the highest I've ever seen a trade yeah it's very high it was just I can't say no to that no no <laughs> that's I mean that's great so just like a low so is the thirty six thousand after the twelve five no, or before that's, that's before okay well all right on, on line 51 you, you in your yeah. notes you made mention what? wash tickets yeah and so rooms. yep uh, wait is that 50 the, the maintenance yeah, yeah ex perfect. absolutely yeah so in the winter right <laughs> we can't wash our cruisers outside in the snow and in the ice <laughs> right. so we bring them to circle t car wash um okay. they give us a discount you know they give us like however many washes we have four wash cards because we have four cruisers um and, and they give us a discount on it and you know it's that's that's that item that probably was never in there before because our previous chief paid for it out of his own pocket um right i mean that's the i mean i'm just being yeah. transparent yeah and it's fine like thank you for doing that but yeah so we've we've brought up before the possibility of a wash point for you know the highway department oh, primarily, yeah, yeah, yeah. but would that be something that you'd be able to make use of? Oh, like going someplace, like going to like another, like going to the highway department and using their wash. Or point? yeah, like if we had a wash point built in the sand pit, for example, I, yeah, it should be you, for all department vehicles. Well, any, yeah, it should be. Well, for I would. Say, I mean, yeah. just because their uniforms and the way they look. Do they want to go get sprayed and have the mud and everything get it sprayed off as they're washing? Thank you, John. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, well, no. I mean, you <laughs> no, guys are. I mean, you have, no. It, yeah, it is. It's like the it would be thing. like no. um, like it's like true. trench coats or overalls that you'd wear to 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 do that. You'd, that's that's rookie duty, anyways. Not for your season. Well, obviously. no. I mean, we have to wash our crews. We, you know, we. So yeah, to answer your question, no. I mean, we have an appearance. We have to make them for wear and tear too, right? You don't want rust or corrosion or whatever, salt, whatever. But to answer your question easily, yes, we would not be opposed if you had a specific area. I don't know exactly what you're saying. You're getting your gas in Raymond, right? We do. Yeah, we use Circle T. That's you know, it's just right there. We use it, and it, it's just much easier in the summertime. You know, in the spring. We have no problems washing them out by the Sally Port. You know, we, we do, we get dirty. Our, our shoes get dirty and cool. pain in the bot pot, we do it. But no, absolutely. If it was something that was that we had, we would absolutely use it. And if that saves some money, sure. It's Why not? It's gonna save pennies. Right, it's save yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, the wash tickets probably. Yeah, it's not. You probably get the, your biggest bang right. for the buck out of, out of using Absolutely, wash no, they do a great job with but us over there. But even for uh, you know, other equipment, like this, this trailer that, that, that you wanna get, or the ATV, yeah. you know, just take it down, you know. I mean, if we had a wash right. point, take it down, you hose it off. No, yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great questions. Um, so uh, that's, all, that's all for the budget for 2022. Propose you have any other questions about? I, uh, you know, 1.4% increase that I thought was very, very conservative. Oh, thank you. Like, and like I said, some of those even can go down, yeah, which, okay. which brings thank me uh, to my next topic, which um, I will, so I will say this. So I have in our per, uh, police budget a surplus of monies. Um, some of it is from a salary that we're not paying because somebody's overseas. My plan would be, um, I have two, two items in Warren articles for next year, tasers and cruiser cameras. My, my thoughts and my proposal would be to at least get the, item, the items that we need, the equipment that we need, and to go ahead and purchase, instead of going forward with a Warren article, the tasers. Um, I got a quote, a hard quote today, um, 34,500 to get that. Um, to get what? To get the tasers, to not go forward with a Warren article for tasers um, and use the funds left over from this year to do that because they're already there and why not do that? Um, 
And so my other thought is that yes, um, and this is for the cruiser cameras too, in 2022, the prices of them are gonna go at five to 6%. So it is safe, you know, it's realistic, it saves money. Um, we have the funds to do that. Um, we, one of, Is the police department the only one that has a surplus? I mean, this doesn't add to the, you know, it's already paid for if you think about it. You know, it's just money that they could use to buy the equipment they need. Instead of you know, it's a it's a perfectly legitimate use of, of the funds. It's just a question of what do you want to do with those funds that year and this year. You just can't you can't make these decisions in isolation. You have to look right. at the complete picture. Right. You have a top line yeah. budget authority. You can do it with whatever you want. Um, and so until you know what the hard number is what we have. What the hard number is and what are we gonna do for what you want to value. It, it's it's certainly something worth it. Yeah, I just think it makes sense, right? So yeah, it's you, responsible. You do that every year, yeah. Usually on a smaller scale. Yeah. Um, then we don't. Then it's. I hate to say it. That's fine. It's not like if. What if they don't pass? So if they don't pass, then I don't get. It. We don't. We don't get the things that we need. And we've been without. So for so. And I'm being honest with you. So we just we take that chance. And I I think it's a risk that is avoidable if we have the funds. And why not use them? That would be my thing. I think it's reasonable and I think it makes sense rather than them saying no. And then even if I have money left over in 2022, if I put those on a warrant article and it gets voted no, I don't, I can't use that leftover money for that purchase because it was denied in a warrant article. If the budgetary realities play out that you can only get one of those two items. Tasers. With, so tasers would be your priority Absolutely. for this year? Yes. Okay. And I, yeah, speaking openly, I think it makes more sense. It, I feel like the town shouldn't even have to vote. That should be something that we have, and it shouldn't be their decision to make. Here's a camera, something different. If they, they know what it entails and they're okay, you know, it makes sense, it's transparency, it's for liability, we're on the up and up, everything's, you know, on the camera, they, they wanna be a part, of that, that makes sense to me too. That's something else so that if we have the funds, we should just go ahead and do. Okay, Chief. That was uh, very informative. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you guys. <laughs> awesome. See you Saturday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Running the parade. <laughs> Let me just put my stuff away in my handy dandy little notebook. I didn't even get to use my uh, computer. That's <laughs> wear your good shoes, your good yeah. walking exactly. shoes. Exactly. Dress warm. Yeah. <clears throat> what is the weather for Saturday? Uh, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. 40 or. Low 40s or something. Sweating like that. in the parade. So comfortable walking weather. Yes. With an ugly sweater. With an ugly sweater, yes. Okay. Thank Thanks you guys. again, Chief. All right. Bye. Have a good night. Nice okay. Road standards. Wondering when the, all the, what she Lauren gave her is a 1.4% increase. Recycling center to 11.4. What was the highway? Uh, the highway uh, number's wrong. That was messed up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that's like a was input four million there. increase. I just want to put two numbers that I saw, like a 66% increase. I don't know if that's right. I don't think so. It's more like 200,000-ish. 
Uh, yeah. It, yeah, it says 2021 budget is $200 oh, yeah, for the highway good. department total. That's that's a oops. That's a That's why it comes out as a 414,950% increase. Yeah. You can present that at the delivery session, okay? No, okay. <laughs> so the, the draft highway alone without the reconstruction budget is about 830,000. You have that in the, in the electronic version of this document. Prior meeting. Oh, it's, it's, it's there and it's, and it's okay. accurate. Got it. This was just a printout thing if I threw together a quarter yep. six. Yep. Uh, that's where that error comes from. So the, the electronic version that you see is So some percentage of that 18% though comes from the Albany Roads. Expenses tied to Albany Roads. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you see that. We want to tackle the road or no? Where did we leave it off last time we discussed it? Road uh, standards. Of you were going to share the concepts with each other. One of the reasons why I lost my paper. I was basically cutting off all the lines that I didn't like on the old. I think that's what we were looking for. Yeah, there's like eight things I said that we need. Do have it? Does anybody have the old one? We all have the paperwork for the old road standards. Were we going to use the old road standards as our starting point? We had the old road standards. Were we starting brand new? Were we starting? We had the old road standards. The closed old whatever road standards. You were going to mark them up with your comments and share it with the board, and you were going to mark it up and share it with. Yeah, I think my position was I was happy with the old standards as they were. Because we had, but I had well, given that we worked on them for so long and that the board did vote to adopt them, you know, I didn't feel there was anything wrong with them. That's, if I remember correctly, that's what I was thinking at the time. But I was certainly willing to look at any proposed changes because. It has to be workable one way or the other. What do you want to do, John? Of it, yep. so I mean, photocopy, you can see everything I have circled, which I don't think should be on there. But that's again an opinion. It's quite a bit of circles, yeah. You pretty much cut it in half, three quarters. But again, that's um, my opinion. Can we so. get a copy of this? We can all digest this. Or you have the ability of scanning and emailing it to us or something? Uh, I could think and of a Crisp. I mean, again, this is mine. This is a yep. board decision on how we approach yep. this. Yep. If you're just looking for my opinion, there it is. But yep. that's, you know, my opinion doesn't count on a vote of five. It's only one vote. So, you know. So everything you circled is what you think should be gone? I don't think it's necessary to have. All right, so I mean, 
We all need copies of that, obviously. But am I the only one giving an opinion? You were the one who had the strongest uh, comments about it, right? So what I think would happen naturally after this is that we would all have a copy of that. We take a look at it. We'd be able to have a discussion about it, and then uh, you know, land where we land. So I mean, everybody's opinion should be part of this. And it should be oh discussion. sure. We may find going through, we may agree with a lot of what you've said. So. so why don't we get a copy and then revisit this again at the next meeting? It'll give us some time to uh, digest yeah. it. That sound fair? But a reminder, the time is getting short, copy. though. Uh, I think before we leave tonight, I'll quickly go over that with you. Just what I made on there. Just to scan this and spread it around? Yeah, it's pretty much something I really circled everything that I didn't like on there, so. Okay, so the, so then part of the discussion would be you circled stuff you don't like, so let's talk about what you don't like about sure. it. Sure. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chris. All right. Any other bit? Okay. Make a motion to enter non public session for RSA 91 A colon 3 section 2A. Second. Motion and second. Uh, all in favor? Roll call. Board. Roll call. Donna Davis. Hi, Tony Dumas. Hi, Ben Barlett. Hi, John Moore. Hi, Tyler Eden. All right, uh, we'll be going into non-public. Uh, upon completion of non-public, we'll be coming out. Uh, meeting will be adjourned. Thank you, Nottingham.